If you've been following along with my Arms Day guides, you will have surely been following the fact that the first curse has been a quest line going for what seems like quite a while now. Well, I managed to get mine very recently, so as with all of the other exotics in Destiny, let's go over how to get this thing. So, the absolute first thing you need to do to start your first curse quest line is to get to rank 5 with the gunsmith. I do not know if you need to complete your rank 2 and rank 3 weapon quests in order to get the first curse quest, but if you hit rank 5 and you don't get the quest, well that's the first thing I would try. The first part of the quest is to get hand cannon kills with a primary telemetry active. That sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? However, instead of getting 75 or 100 kills, you need 250 kills, so just kind of hack away at that as you please because you'll have plenty of time to do it. In fact, you'll have a full week to do that because once you complete that part of the quest, you'll head back to the gunsmith and he will tell you to wait until the next arms day. So, you wait a week, and the gunsmith calls you back because he has a prototype weapon called Imprecation for you. You'll have three objectives for this hand cannon. The first is to infuse the weapon to 260 attack. The weapon has an infuse rate of 50%, meaning it's only going to absorb 50% of the attack rating of the items you feed it. That sounds bad until you realize all you need are two 280 attack weapons to be done, so... Given that you're probably watching this on a Wednesday, you can probably get rid of one of those gunsmith weapons you got from Arms Day and dump it into this if you're desperate. The next step is to get a hand cannon spree in the Crucible. Spree is not really the right word though, so don't get confused. All you need to do is get 7 headshot kills with the weapon in one game of Crucible. They don't need to be rapid, they can be over the course of the entire game. Death will not set you back. However, if you don't get those 7 kills in one game, you will be reset back to zero. And yes, the kills need to be with the hand cannon, you can't just have it equipped and get kills with other weapons. Rumble might be good for this, I did it in Salvage, any smaller game mode seems to work better, but it's probably just personal preference. The last thing you need to do is get a 7 kill spree in PvE, and this is very much a spree. You need 7 rapid kills with the weapon. You need to shoot this thing nearly as fast as you can fire it for it to be considered a spree. However, the gun only has 6 shots and you need 7 kills, so at least 3 of those kills need to be headshot kills in a row so that you can trigger triple tap. After that, they can be body shot kills. An easy place to do this is in the Siege of the Warmind story mission. There are a ton of Thrall that rush you from the staircase, just line them up and get to work. It should not take too long to get this to happen. Just remember that they need to be quick. If you're not firing the gun almost as fast as it can be fired, you're probably going too slow. Turn that quest in and wait another week until the next arms day. Then, he just gives you the gun. Just like that. Done. You're done. Standard on the gun is the Deadeye bonus, where you gain a bonus to range, stability, and movement speed when aiming down sights. The gun also comes with Triple Tap and the aptly named The First Curse, where precision kills while aiming down sights grant increased range and stability until the next reload. Did some testing in PvE and PvP, first impressions kind of testing. It's a gun. I'll tell you that much. For older players, you may know this as a Timmer's Lash style hand cannon, which is the super slow, super hard hitting hand cannon type that was never really that popular. It never really gained a lot of traction. We'll start with PvE. Right now, it feels too average. You are completely decimating low tier targets with this thing massive overkill with headshots. It does solid damage per shot and it's very satisfying to shoot. The sound is nice and loud but it doesn't really feel like it does anything more than something like Hawkmoon. My first curse is only 290 and my Hawkmoon is 303, and they were doing about the same damage. So obviously the first curse will end up doing more damage per shot when on equal footing. But eight shots in the magazine leaves a lot to be desired versus Hawkmoon's 13 shots plus luck in the chamber bonuses. 
The increased range from Deadeye feels hard to notice. It seems very rare that I'd actually want to be firing a hand cannon from such long distances that I would actually notice the difference between certain range stats on certain hand cannons. The stability is noticeable though, considering I am using Smooth Ballistics. With a completely garbage stability stat, you'd expect the gun to be all over the place, but it's really not that bad to control, although part of this could be because you have so much downtime between each shot due to its slow rate of fire. Against bosses, this thing's not going to be very good as you'll never see the first curse bonus activate. Against regular adds, it never feels like you'll be far enough away where the bonus range is actually going to matter. It needs something for single target damage, but it just needs something in general because right now for PvE, I don't think there's a single reason to use this over something like Hawkmoon unless you don't have a Hawkmoon. And that's just comparing it to other hand cannons. There's no way I'd use this over many other things in the game right now that I like. My Smite of Moraine, Scout Rifles, name it. Right off the bat, I'd say this thing needs a slight buff. Maybe bump it up to 9 shots in the magazine and do something where multiple precision hits increase precision damage against minions of the darkness to make it not feel so average. Give me a more noticeable way to feel like I'm being rewarded for my precision, my accuracy, my slow, well-placed shots. Sneaking in an extra shot in there is kind of tough to notice in the heat of battle, and it doesn't really make me feel any stronger. I get that if you land all 8 precision shots, you're going to end up with a couple more, but once again, Hawkmoon has 13 shots base. I think an interesting concept would be increased damage against minions of the darkness based on how many precision hits you hit before you reload it, so that you can actually notice it on your next reload. This might end up being too strong, maybe it could be something like Glass Totally Full, where each precision shot increases the damage of the next precision shot. I don't know, something with increased damage would be nice though. In PvP, it's not great. It's got a little range to it, but the thing fires so slowly that you're probably going to be outgunned by stuff like fast rate of fire pulses and the like. There's a reason this archetype of hand cannon was never really that popular besides the very specifically built ones from year one with very specific bonuses, and that reason is because it's too slow. 95 to the head and 64 to the body means you won't be two shouting anyone, not that I'm advocating for that because if you could do that, that would be incredibly stupid. The first curse is a gun that wants to reward very precise shooters. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel like it really does that right now. It's not a bad gun, but... Hawkmoon just feels as efficient as the first curse with more shots, less dependency on precision hits, and a faster rate of fire. This thing could use a buff somewhere to make it feel more rewarding in PvE. Its only hope in PvP is to make it a two-shot kill to the head, which is never going to happen, so don't get your hopes up for this gun in PvP. But those are my first impressions on the first curse. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.